welcome to the couch. Happy Monday, happy whatever week this is, whatever day this is. <laughs> um, we're so glad that you're here with us on the couch, and we're really excited um, about our episode as always today. How are you doing, Carly? I am pretty good. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I am having a productive week, month, year thus far, um, and rest of today too. So it feels good when you're on a program and like you're just making um, intentional use of all of your time. So that's really what I've been doing um, lately. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Ooh. So for that, you know, I am very grateful. And of course, part of my morning routine is, well, I don't want to say of course, but part of my routine that I have is I always try to spend in the morning a little bit of time for myself. So I'll either read or I'll do some writing or I'll listen to podcasts. And today's episode was sparked for me because I was listening to a podcast. Um, I forgot which one it was. Impact Theory, I think, Mm -hmm. Um, with Tom Bilyeu, which I would recommend. It's pretty good because um, Tom reminds me of me. Like, he doesn't let people just, like, talk through fluff. And, like, he really, like, asks them a lot of questions and makes them challenge like the stuff that they're saying um but Deepak Chopra you probably are familiar with him if you're not um trying to think of what's that one book that I really love by him too the seven spiritual laws of success Mm -hmm. have you read that or heard of it I've heard of it haven't read it it's on my list yeah so I would recommend if you haven't um read or listened to the seven laws of what is seven spiritual laws of success I first heard it from the audiobook and it's only 45 minutes long Mm. so it's actually um, like really good and short to listen to. And I used to um, listen to it every morning like while I was getting ready because it was only 45 minutes. So you know how, whether it's certain CDs or stuff like that, you know how long th- that is like to get ready or to do what you need to do. So that used to be a good start to my day. So I'd recommend if you haven't read it, um, just to like listen to it because he reads it himself. And I think he probably says some extra stuff too. Um, but in the podcast episode I was listening to, Um, He said something towards the end, and the whole episode wasn't about gratitude, but he said, gratitude opens the door to abundance consciousness. When I'm feeling grateful for what I already have, I feel fulfilled and joyful. And if you have gratitude, you can't experience hostility at the same time. Mm. So, and again, like, I feel like all this stuff is like the cliche, simple things, but the simple things are really like those truths when you get down to it, the more you read and see stuff everywhere and I feel like I always see any business owner or self-help book is like always about gratitude, 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 or that's always a chapter or part of it. Yeah. Um, and I've always kind of understood why. I'm like, yeah, it feels good when you're thinking about being grateful. But just the way he said it so succinctly, um, it really made me think like, oh, when you are thinking about what you're thankful for, it literally is impossible to like have other thoughts as well. Um, so what are your thoughts on like, what you already know of gratitude and how that impacts you. Um, it's funny when you were reading the quote, I just heard it in his voice. Mm-hmm. I do, um, him and Oprah have a lot of free 21 day meditations and they kind of like walk you through things. And so he has a great voice like for, you know, spiritual and peaceful things. Um, so it's funny. I just heard that exactly in his, you were saying, what do I feel like I already know about gratitude? Or? Mm-hmm. Like, cause we talk about it all the time, but um, you know, what is it, how has gratitude played in your life, I guess, or in your journey? Um, gratitude is a huge part of everything that I do. I feel like as someone who's generally excitable all of the time, like it's, I'm like, oh man, that sunset was amazing. Like that, like, wow, I'm super grateful for that or for friends, like spending time with them. Um, and so it's kind of in everything that I do. It's, it, I do also wake up and I'm like, all right, what are, like when I first wake up in the morning, like before I get out of bed, I'm like, okay, what are three things or what are 10 things? The number is random, but I'm like, you know, what are things that I'm grateful for? And I sit there and like think of things because it helps me tune in and um, no matter what's going on, you can always think of those things that, you know, help ground you. And for me, a lot of that is gratitude, like being grateful for my health or for the people that love me or for, you know, waking up for another day and just tuning back in. And so it's a thread that is interwoven into the tapestry of my life, like in every mm-hmm. sense, like I'm grateful all of the time, but I'm also very intentionally grateful. Like when I first wake up, I like thinking through a list of things, but also writing down things that I'm grateful. And anytime I find myself getting anxious, like sometimes that is or stressed out or overwhelmed or if I feel like I'm about to start complaining because I don't complain a lot like about stuff. If I do, I'm like, nope, we're going to change this into a gratitude list because I'm not wasting my breath on that. Mm-hmm. And I think part of the key of what made 
that quote that he said a little different to me is connecting uh, gratitude to abundance because that's what made me think like, okay, when you're thinking about what you're thankful for, like that is celebrating abundance and celebrating Mm -hmm. that you have things and have enough and um, that you're doing well versus when you're stressed out is totally the opposite. You're either feeling like you're not enough, you don't have enough time, um, you don't have enough money. Like it's always like kind of around the scarcity. And so that made me think like anytime I'm feeling good is that, is that usually when I'm, if I'm in a spirit of gratitude or, and when I think about it, it usually is when I'm like, man, like, you know, I'm proud of something or this is going well, or really it's you being grateful. Like when you're in a good mood. It is. And it's where focus goes, energy flows. And so when people talk about like that scarcity mentality or mentality of lack, if you're always focusing on, man, I need to make this, you know, I don't have it this month. I got to figure out how to get it this month instead of being like, you know, looking back and like, man, I've actually always had it. Like even in moments when I didn't think Mm -hmm. I was going to get it, I've always had it. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the ability to go get it. And and it's like, you know, flipping that perspective, but it really does help transition that mindset to allow to receive more. Because if you're in a place of like fear or of anger or any type of like, quote unquote, what would be considered like more negative emotions or emotions that aren't your like highest vibration, then that just begets more of that. And so it's really transitioning those thoughts so that you can bring in that that abundance. And it's kind of cool that you um, said like you kind of can flip your perspective on certain things as far as I'm glad I get the opportunity to make a thing happen or to try for something. Because when you think about it, there really is always something you can say. And I guess maybe that's part of the key too. It's like there's always something because you're here to even think about it, um, if that. So um, there is always something and it's like focusing your mind on the positive essentially, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, But in one of the last episodes or the last episode, um, in 75, um, I remember we talked about like how do you recenter yourself, right? When sometimes things aren't going um, as well. But in the big scheme of things, you're like, everything's cool. Like I'm doing good. Um, but you know, it just is hard along the journey. Um, and we talked about recentering and we talked about gratitude and I feel like we talk about it in a lot of episodes. So I just wanted to go into it a little more today about how it works and like why it works and just some different, um, maybe things to consider. Maybe it'll hit somebody a little differently as a listener, um, about how to like exercise or think about gratitude. And I like that because I feel like in if you listen to podcasts, if you watch inspirational Instagram videos and YouTube mm-hmm. or listen to anything, like people are always talking about gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. But rarely is there a breakdown of like, well, these are some ways to try it or to try to integrate it or to maybe expand your practice mm-hmm. in gratitude. Mm-hmm. Or just even be more conscious of it because again, um, uh, something you said earlier reminded me how of in a lot of black churches or in Uh, black family traditions of Christian, you usually hear that same type of prayers like, I'm glad I opened my eyes this morning or like (laughs) grateful for just getting up or to see another day. You know how people say that. And it's like, are we just saying that? Or like, are you really feeling it, feeling it? So gratitude, it's like instilled as like, that's what you're supposed to do. Feel thankful. Thank God. Thank whatever it is Mm -hmm. for you being here. But are you really like feeling it? You know what I mean? I feel like there's a difference when you're really like intentionally um, feeling that, doing the visualization and like really assessing because you really have to be in a good mood. Oh my God. Yeah. That takes me back. Like saying prayers. Like, okay, what are you grateful? I'm grateful for the food on my plate. Right. I'm grateful for the roof over my head. Clothes and just on be my saying back. stuff. Yeah. And just be saying <laughs> stuff to say it. And that's why I don't let myself say the same things every morning. Like whenever I am mm-hmm. doing it, I, I cannot say the same thing every morning because every morning it's a little different. Sometimes I'm like, man, I'm grateful I got enough sleep. Sometimes I'm like, man, I'm grateful I woke up this morning. That's mm-hmm. all I got. Mm-hmm. Like, And that, I think that's good, too, to, to try to think of something different and into that. So that's what I want us to do right now is just to whether you look around or just like close your eyes for a second. Um, I want you as a listener to mm-hmm. think of something right now that you're grateful for. It could be the first thing that maybe pops up or you could think about it for a second um, but Carly, what's one thing that you would say right now that you're grateful for? Uh, two, because I'm not good at following rules. I'm grateful for sunrises and sunsets. <laughs> like I just look up and I'm just amazed all the time. Like last night I was like, man, this sky looks so cool. And then this morning I'm like, yo, it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And it's just those little moments. But sometimes we can be so stuck in our phones or so stuck in what's happening around us or going on in our heads that we forget to look up. Mm-hmm. And then so how do you feel even just expressing there or talking about it? Um, man, I'm like cheesing, like my mm-hmm. cheeks, like I'm just cheesing and it just makes me so happy. Um, my friends kind of tease me 
like, yeah, like, you know, whenever you want to stop and take a picture of a flower or the sky. And I'm like, yo, that really is Mm -hmm. my life. Like, it just makes me so grateful that, you know, God and the universe were so thoughtful to give us all those beautiful things. And sometimes we're so stuck in just the everyday nonsense Mm -hmm. that we forget that we really are alive and that there really are beautiful things out there if we just actually take a moment to stop and look around. So it just kind of, it warms up my heart and just makes me, Mm -hmm. like, feel out levy. That's good. And, you know... um, to bring this back to like a different whole aspect of life in marketing and business, um, the top emotion that or the top emotion that evokes other people to engage with you is awe. And Mm. you remember how I I think it was last week um, in our episode, we were talking about um, having a bigger perspective or bigger overview than you. I don't, Mm -hmm. that's not the right word, but like a bigger knowing there's bigger, something bigger than you. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's not necessarily saying to believe in anything, but awe and seeing like the mountain range in front of you or a sunset or the ocean those are like a top sparking emotion to people so like in marketing I know that's something where you put something big in front of somebody put something that reminds them Mm. of like oh man like there's so much more out here or like you know there's so much that's complicated or complex and well designed around me and all that and so that that generally does evoke a bigger emotion out of people. So I think that that's an interesting correlation that you kind of proved there. <laughs> um, I want to say that I'm grateful for my balcony area in my room and as I'm looking out there because yesterday too, um, like I laid a towel out there and I like laid out and just tanned and did like a meditation, just like soaked up some sun. Mm. And I love being out there just working or like I'll eat my meals out there. I take my flowers out there. Um, I'll take my computer out there and work. Um, when it's a nice day out here and maybe like LA weather into your uh, what you say too it's like the weather the your surroundings I think that has a big impact on um, my mood personally as well so for me like those are the things I'm grateful for and you know it's kind of like those moments are being able to enjoy those moments feeling like you're not worrying at that time Um, so it's just like a good safe feeling I think so maybe kind of feeling safe and gratitude reminds you that you have things and um that hopefully, like, in that moment, you are safe. So um, please hit us on Instagram stories or tweet us. Let us know what that thing is that you were thinking of is. Yeah, what you are thankful you for. Yep, how it makes you feel, what it looks like. If you want to send us a picture, whatever. Um, I would love to see your stories or hear what makes you feel that way or makes you feel good. Um, and that's also something to um, keep in mind because maybe that's something you can – picture or bring up later when you're maybe in a mood or thinking about how you can be grateful um when you're talking about like that thing that makes you feel good you're in a good space in that moment and maybe it flips right back I don't know but um again it's just all part of practicing and and I think if you can feel that and you know like you're intentional about like I'm feeling good because I'm thinking about the abundance and what I'm grateful for. Mm. I think the cool thing is you can kind of call on that at any moment if you're aware of the fact that you can do that for yourself. Um, So I think everything, again, in life is up and down, but gratitude, I see, is a huge key. And like I said before, it seems cliche. Everybody talks about it, but we're going to kind of give you some reasons and some ideas and thoughts around gratitude outside of um, ways to practice later, but reasons why gratitude is such a big key. And like, we really want you to get into this. Do you want to start with the list or you want me to start? Um, you can start. So why is gratitude the key? <laughs> so I think one of the biggest things is that it unshackles you from toxic emotions. Mm-hmm. So it shifts your attention from thinking about negative. So, you know, sometimes if you're overthinking and um, maybe you're on social media and you're like, oh man, he's with another girl or something's happening or whatever, envy, resentment, you're feeling like, oh man, I don't have enough time to finish working. You're focusing a lot of your time on what's not good or what's not working or what you think or what's maybe not even really happening. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can shift to thinking about what what you're grateful for and you're training yourself to focus more on what you have instead of those other emotions. And so I think it's a good way um, in studies, I think what I read was in a study of seeing people who were doing like gratitude writing versus people who weren't, it's not so much that their lives were necessarily better, but when the gratitude people talked, they talked more positive 
instead of talking the negative because mm-hmm. they were used to thinking about what's the good, what's the good, what's the good. So when they report, they're kind of more focused on that. And so you're kind of training yourself to be in that mode versus, yeah. oh man, like feeling the stress all the time. No, that's good. It definitely helps ground you mm-hmm. and bring you back to the present, which is one of my favorite things about gratitude is it helps you get out of your head when all that stuff is going on and brings you back to the present moment. Mm-hmm. Um, another great thing about gratitude and why it's important is because it's not dependent on anybody else. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have to call you and be like, hey, you know, I'm grateful for this. And that's what gives me the good feeling. It's not me telling you. It's me recognizing those own things in my own life that I'm grateful for and help in it. And I don't even have, I mean, you I think it's better if you write it. It's like there's a lot of studies that show when you write things with your hands, the way that it makes imprints on your brain and all of the, and like your, um, I'm going to mess up whatever that is, but your brain (laughs) and all your, Mm. your bodily systems. Um, You like suck it in more. Yeah. You soak it in and you, it becomes more real when you're actually handwriting things as opposed to typing them. Um, So I try to do a balance of all writing in a journal, but also Mm -hmm. writing in the notes in my phone. Um, the toxic wasteland that is the notes in my phone. <laughs> so much stuff in there. But it, it it's not dependent on anybody or anything. I think it is beautiful sometimes when people do share because it's like a great, like a great reminder. Sometimes I'll see it on my stories and I'm like, oh, you're right. Like, yeah, let me just check in with myself. What am I grateful for today? Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Like you can always impact people by sharing. But again, it's one of those things where you don't even need anything. You Mm -hmm. just need to shift. So it's kind of being aware and having a mindset shift to have that moment for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, Scientifically, um, the prefrontal cortex of your brain, this is where um, your brain focuses its decision-making, memory, learning, basically like forming habits. This is where um, it's the drug-seeking, so those things that make you feel good, like that area is uh, lighted up or lit up at that time. (laughs) Um, So one thing with um, gratitude is that in studies, again, they showed that that uh, medial prefrontal cortex generated more activity and it was very active when people were practicing um, gratitude in a way that it was, um, I don't want to say like a drug to you, but of course it gives you the feel goods. And then it also is something that does become part of like habit and, and, it's part of like the background of how you learn and your memory and what you're going to do next time. And so it's almost like reinforcing like positive reinforcement as well to your decisions and your actions when you're practicing gratitude. That's something that starts to become like perpetually like done. So um, Mm. scientifically they said it, it, it puts you into um, a cycle, which I'll talk about in a second. Yeah. Sorry, I already got ahead now. No, you're good. It almost like it's rewriting those neural pathways, like you're mm-hmm. retraining your brain how to think, which leads to health in general. So and the reason why people a lot of times do meditation and exercise and yoga is because it helps get in breath work exercises is because it helps get your body out of fight or flight mm-hmm. and out of your like out of your sympathetic into your parasympathetic nervous systems or vice versa, because my brain is crazy today. But um it also improves your health. So if you're able to de-escalate and your body's not in a constant state of fear or fight or flight, like it improves your overall health, can help you sleep better. Um, there's a Chinese study that said that people with higher levels of gratitude have better sleep and just overall it allows you to be more present in your body and mm-hmm. that helps your bodily processes so your health can improve. Mm-hmm. Like literally pr- improves. Um, and outside of what does improve, also just self-reported in studies, people who were doing more of the gratitude writing and journaling um, reported that they had less ailments. And so it's almost one of those things, like if you're telling yourself constantly what's good, I don't want to be like you don't feel that stuff, but you're not, some things, some things you feel and are going through because you're f- so focused on it, like of course you're going to feel like the tension in my, you know, my shoulders right now when I'm really mm-hmm. like going through it, but when that's not your focus, they report less ailments. And it's like when you report less ailments, when you're not thinking about less ailments, you're not thinking of it as a limitation and you're doing more, doing things differently, you know? So again, it's like kind of like a mental thing as well with the actual, like you feeling better in your body, like kind of healing itself as well. And I like that, it, what you said about it, not perceiving things as limitations, um, but rather as opportunities. And I'm, a direct correlation is like working out. Like, let's say you want to go run a mile, but about halfway through, you get really tired. And then you start beating yourself mm-hmm. up because you couldn't finish the mile, but you finished a half. So next day, try for 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.75. And, you know, be grateful that your body is showing up for you in those ways. Keep pushing, but be grateful for where you are in the moment. Um, one of my favorite lessons in yoga is you have to let your body show up however it shows up on the mat mm-hmm. and be grateful for that because mm-hmm. you're here. Mm-hmm. 
Um, another thing too, going with your health is that uh, studies show people getting way better sleep when they practice gratitude. And I can imagine that has to do with probably feeling safe, your body probably being more calm um, and allowing you to maybe drift better into sleep or get more of that time where your mind's not overthinking or maybe mm-hmm. doing too much. Um, but higher levels of gratitude um, really make you just relax better. So again, some people I know they do it at nighttime um, and that's kind of the last thing they do before they go to sleep for the day. And then going back to the quote that you mentioned from Deepak earlier, is like you can't have hostility and gratitude in the same space. Like love and fear cannot exist in the same space. They're opposite emotions. And so it helps you to focus and bring attention to what's positive in your life, um, what's positive and kind of getting away from those toxic cycles. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with confirmation bias? I mean, yes, but I would like for you to talk about (laughs) it. Okay. So confirmation bias is when you are saying, oh man, I'm so dumb or wow, I look good. Like confirmation bias is that your brain is going to try to make whatever you say a reality Mm. because I'm not, I can't make myself a liar. So you know, if, oh man, I'm not a morning person. You're probably not a morning person. So again, you see how people uh. say like what you say is what you are um, because of that. And so because of practicing gratitude, you can give yourself a confirmation bias of abundance. Like, so that's, that's why, as I was kind of starting to allude to earlier, it perpetuates a cycle that's good and healthy, not only because of like the dopamine that's released when you feel good because mm-hmm. you're practicing gratitude, but because if you're consistently, man, I'm thankful, like, I can pay my bills this month, like, I love this sun, I love this, like, everything's going well. If you're grateful for those things, you can list them out. Your brain's looking for more things to, like, do that with. Yeah. Like, you are on the hunt for, like, yo, what else am I grateful for? Man, that's good, too. That's good, too. Like, man, my friend called me. It's been a good day. It's been a good week. And it perpetuates that cycle. And so it's really just a matter of making that a habit, right? Making it a habit to think about what you're grateful for um, because you're going to continue to see those things and it just brings more to you. You eat the fruit that you speak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, um, Carly, you mentioned earlier some ways that you practice and you mentioned writing um, um, in the morning when you said you just come up with things. Is that writing or are you speaking or what is um, your preferred methods, I guess? I do both. So the first thing I do when I wake up Like when I'm like conscious, even if my eyes are closed, I'm like, all right, what are X amount of things that I'm grateful for today? And I'm like, okay, I'm grateful for Alexia. I'm grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful Mm -hmm. for my car. Like, you know, and then then later on after I get up and I start moving around, when I journal, I do write down things that I'm grateful for. And I also write down people that I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. And I try to also like, you know, think about that too. Like, man, I'm really grateful for that conversation we had or for the joy that they bring to my life or how they love me or whatever. Like I Mm -hmm. make it a conscious habit every single day to write at least one person that I'm grateful for. And sometimes I also send them gratitude notes. Mm -hmm. Like I try to like mail people stuff about that. That's good. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's a good idea to write it. um, Keep it notebook by your bed is a good idea if you want to um in the morning or in the evening write that down I think it's also good even if you just say it and just aware of it um I don't really have a routine for gratitude I I don't know why I pause and do it when I do but I I feel like I do pause often to flip a switch I think I'm really good now at recognizing if I'm in a space where I need to flip it and then I just go through like certain actions to flip that and gratitude tends to be one of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, in which case I kind of look around and like feel like, yeah, I'm comfortable right now or, you know, whatever's around me is like, I'm fine. Um, and then I kind of start there and it usually is to like jump me back into whatever I'm supposed to be focused on or working on if my mind has gone off track. Um, so I don't really write them or have a particular routine, but I do practice it often. And I think another thing that's important is, or another thing you can do is to set a reminder. Mm-hmm. So I know some people like when they see a red car, if they walk through a doorway or, you know, at certain times or when you have something that can trigger it for you, um, kind of thinking of something that can trigger that and let that be a time where whenever that thing happens, like, let me stop for a second and think about, you know, something I'm grateful for. Yeah, and if you have, like, a work day, like, maybe one, like, mid-morning and one mid-afternoon, like, when Mm -hmm. you know the food starts to hit and you're starting to get sleepy Mm -hmm. or you have all these meetings, like, just a quick little reminder. It doesn't have to be a big ceremony, but it also can be if that's something Mm -hmm. that's important to you. Mm -hmm. And I don't know know if you said you say yours aloud or not. I think that's part of what you said, but I think that can be important, too, saying things aloud versus just thinking about them. Um, 
sometimes it makes you feel more emotion when you say something out loud mm-hmm. or if you're like looking at yourself saying it. It's almost like um, maybe it's like less of a cop out than like just thinking about it, right? And it's and it's less of a cop out too than trying to talk to somebody that might be too much or whatever. But yeah. um, you know, just even saying it out loud, like and and really expressing it. And I think another part of it is. Uh, we alluded to earlier when you're saying what you're thankful for, really feeling that and like really trying to visualize. And I don't know, maybe you have some better tips for things to think about if you're visualizing what you're grateful for. How do you take yourself kind of there for a second? But um, as much as you can practice that, um, you're really like taking your body there. So I think that's something cool to to try out. I um, Tips around it, I would just say try to set aside a couple minutes like where it's just you or you'll be uninterrupted like if it's in the morning if it's during your lunch break in your car like whatever that is and practice like conscious breathing meaning you're just aware of your breath so try to deepen it and kind of bring yourself into a calmer state so you can de-escalate so you can actually focus and I like picture things like whenever I'm thinking those lists or if you're speaking them out loud like man I'm really grateful for sunrises and think about the last one that you saw Mm -hmm. you know I'm really grateful for my friend or my partner and kind of think about them and then just like sending them love because you're putting that positive energy out into the universe but while also rewriting those neural pathways in your brain Um, I tend to say them out loud like more so whenever I get anxious or I notice like if I'm in my car and I'm like ah I'm like okay whew, okay I'm alive that's wonderful like I'm grateful for this I'm grateful for this and that kind of helps me calm down mm-hmm. okay um and I think it's also important to remember that with all as with all these things like it takes time to um, make it a habit and so Whenever you feel frustrated, if you catch yourself feeling frustrated, I think that's okay. But again, if you're catching yourself, then that's already like step one Mm -hmm. and then just trying to flip it. So it takes time to make it like an ongoing, like a natural thing. Um, And I think with most of the things we talk about, what's interesting is how often you might catch yourself after being more aware of it right now and listening about gratitude and and thinking about the words you might be saying to yourself, the words you might be saying to other people yeah. um, to catch it and to think about it a little bit more and that, yo, right now, is this a scarcity or is this you know, me mm-hmm. being abundant? If you're being abundant, that's pretty much probably gratitude. I can't really think of like what you could be thinking um, that's like happy and it doesn't reflect back to gratitude, if that makes sense. So yeah. um, notice what those things are. Notice how you feel around things and... Um, you know, how you can flip it at any time. And and on that, also, like Alexia said, it takes time, but also it's not going to fix everything all the time, and that's okay, too. What it really is is just instilling this practice, helping you rewrite those neural pathways, helping you change your mindset and gradually flip perspective. Like, if you've been living on this earth for 30 years, 35 years, however long, and gratitude really hasn't been a practice, like, can't expect to get it the first day and you can't expect like one gratitude session to make everything okay in your life. Mm -hmm. It's just really bringing you back to what you have and helping you get out of your head and get back more into the present. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so I think it's very important that you practice. Um, And we want to show gratitude to all of our listeners too. And thank you guys for being a part of the journey with us and participating and listening and engaging. And to that, we do want you to leave us five stars, leave us a review and also hit us up sometime um, if you guys have any shout outs or if there's anybody or organization or just something coming up or anything that you feel will be cool and in line with what we talk about mm-hmm. um, to express. Because we like to do shout outs and I don't think we have any today. But I don't um, think so either. Yeah, so we like to do a shout out at the end of the episode and we'd love to highlight some cool things going on. So if you're doing dope things, if your friends are doing dope things, please let us know so we can celebrate them and give them their flowers now. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so funny that you said um, give them their flowers because <laughs> the question of the Ooh. week that I wanted to ask us is who can you give flowers to this week? And I don't know if maybe you don't necessarily have to say their real name or like who they are, who yeah. they are, but just thinking about that, like, yo, who's somebody that this week you can, um, not even going out of your way, but whether you just say thank you or, or be like, yo, I see what you're doing or write them something or whatever. Yeah, I'll answer. Um One of my friends, her name is Amanda. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, We both started in the holistic health and wellness industry, like at the same time, Mm -hmm. like five years ago, back when I was living in Dallas. And over the years, like I've been in school and she was in school and she still lives in Dallas, but I've watched her business like grow Mm -hmm. and bloom. And like her is just a woman and as a person and supporting other people. And so she was visiting in LA and I got to see her yesterday and it was so 
amazing. Like, I'm so grateful. My heart was so full just to be able to, you know, have community and fellowship and hear about all the things that she's doing. And she's like, you know, sis, how can I help you? Like, how, like, what's going on? Is she a shout out? No, like, does she have anything going on right now? Um, She doesn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, her business is just amazing. Make on mindfulness. Um, She, where is she located? Dallas. Oh, but she travels a lot to speak um, and teaching stress resiliency techniques. Mm -hmm. But she is like, just amazing. It's beautiful to see support and know that, you know, even if you're across the country from someone, like they're still watching you and they're still supporting you and and all that and it was beautiful. That's good. Um, for me, I would want to take time out to thank. I can't really single anybody out necessarily right now, but I would say I would want to thank the team that I've been working with because we've been doing a lot of like random hours and like <laughs> trying to figure things out, and everybody has been like on par. Um, and keeping up with things and helping everybody move forward. Yeah. So I would really be appreciative of them, which I probably should be doing by paying all those invoices this week. <laughs> She's um, going to pay On me. top of that. <laughs> and um, I don't know, I want to do something like nice with them one day. I foresee like us doing some like cool stuff and having like a really good company culture. And even talking with my uh, financial guy, who now is like my business financial department as of this week, um, you know, he's, we're talking about how, like, yo, now we can even have an account for, like, when it's, like, you want to do bonuses or y'all mm-hmm. want to do something. And I was like, oh, shoot, we got to go to Hawaii or something one day. Not, y'all not need no a mindfulness soon. instructor. Not no time <laughs> soon. But um, but I appreciate them. And like you said earlier, there's a lot of people I'm thankful for, like, in my life. So Bruh. that's a good place to start, you know, with people that are inspiring you or who are supportive, et cetera. Um, but, yeah, what are you guys grateful for this week? Who can you give their flowers to um don't be um hesitant to appreciate people out loud and give them yeah. their flowers because you never know you know they may have no idea you're thinking like that about them or may make their day or whatever so yeah and but it, it lets them feel seen and that's why i said i really mm-hmm. like try to write thank you notes or at least call or text them be like hey you're on my heart i appreciate you for being here because man life would not be as sweet you know, without the people who are here supporting and cheering me on and sharpening me and all those things. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. With that, we want to thank you for listening to this episode on gratitude. Uh. Share it. Leave us a comment and we will see you next week. Bye, y'all.